Rudy continued his lecture. Our Lord and Savior's ministry is linked to that of John the Baptizer. Biblical history shows that John was preaching in and around the area of the Jordan River when Jesus came to him to be baptized. Now here's a question for everyone, everyone but Wendell. How are John and Jesus related? I'll give extra credit for the correct answer. Rudy wrote out the question on the chalkboard and then waited for an answer. The children grew quiet again. Some thumbed through the copy of the Bible in front of them. Others whispered answers amongst themselves. Wendell bit his lip so as not to blurt out a response. Cana shrugged, stretched his long legs out in front of him, crossed his arms, and resumed his nap. The students discussed a plausible answer. In a few moments, his sister raised a hesitant hand. Yes, Gabriela, tell us. Well, John and Jesus were cousins because their mothers, Elizabeth and Mary, were related. Perfect, correct. There's an, an old tradition that holds that Mary's mother, Anna, was married to a man named Heli. Anna had a sister who was mother to Elizabeth. So now, on with the ministry of Jesus. We know he began his ministry in the spring of 29 CE. Herod Antipas, as you may recall from our study of ancient Rome, was ruler in the area of Galilee and Perea during this time, and Tiberius Caesar was emperor in Rome. Can anyone remember the prophecy regarding John's purpose? Wendell's hand shot up. Rudy shook his head. We've heard enough from you today, Wendell. Somebody else can give an answer. The boy whined and slumped into his seat. Come now, you students. Can't let Wendell do all the work. We covered this in the chapter about prophecy a couple of months back. Where is the prophecy and what does it indicate about John's role? <sighs> this is so easy. Wendell muttered. It's easy when a person bothers to repair, prepare, Rudy replied. He pushed the sleeves of his shirt back up to his elbows and scanned the students. The fire crackling in the hearth above overwarmed the small schoolroom, making it feel like a wool sweater on the hottest summer day. Cana's snoring rose with the heat in the air. Rudy's ire flashed. He pushed the heavy dictionary off his desk again. Cana, wake up! The boy opened one dark eye. Stand up! Rudy snapped. Cana's other eye popped open. His eyebrows arched like high, two high bridges. What? You heard me. Stand up! Cana came to a straight sit in his chair. He looked around at the other students. They, in turn, threw anxious glances at each other. What for? he asked. Rudy stood over Kena's desk. Well, I thought it might help you stay awake. Kind of hard to sleep while on your feet. Stand, please. Kena rose slothful like. Now, can you please explain John the Baptizer's role in the ministry of Jesus? The youth shoved his hands in his pockets and sighed. He gave Rudy a bored look and answered the question. <sighs> From what I remember, he prepared the way for Jesus. He gathered disciples, something else that happened thousands of years ago. Rudy scratched his head and crossed his arms. Cana. Has it ever occurred to you that you are in a history class? History is about the past. This particular past we are studying directly relates to us. One day you will teach this to others. Cana leaned slightly forward on the balls of his feet. He was Rudy's six foot height. His brown eyes met Rudy's own. This is a class every student must take. 
My preference is current events, life under the new scrolls. When our Creator res resurrects the dead, I can worry about teaching them about the past at that time. For now, the time we live in is what matters. Our generation, our ways. Rudy began pacing the floor anew while countering Cana's point. Ah, our generation, our ways? You know, my mother has a saying, there's lots of blood in the ground. That means the price to have the peaceful world we live in has come at great cost. First and foremost, God's own Son gave his life that we might have the eternity we are blessed to live now. Then, there were the human beings who died for their faith. Some died by violence, and others had the good fortune to pass away peacefully. And still others died in spiritual darkness, not having an opportunity to learn about our Creator. There were religions of old who discouraged and even punished those who read the scriptures in the severest ways by torture or brutal death, such as being burned alive with the Bible tied around the person's neck. Masses of people were kept illiterate, and only a small group or religious class who could read would interpret holy writings for those who had no education. The scriptures were also kept in languages that eventually died out. This led to not only a lack of biblical knowledge, but also pagan thought began to replace the truth of what was in God's word. One example would be the teaching that there was an eternal burning hell where the souls of those who were evil went after they died. But the spiritual darkness was only one aspect of life in times past. There was also war, disease, famine, and the end of one's natural short life that a person had to contend with. So, Cana, it is important to know this history well, because these masses will be resurrected, and we will have a lot to teach them. You are, however, correct in saying that John prepared the way for Jesus. If the class would turn to the book of Malachi 3.1, Cana will do us the pleasure of reading this prophecy. Rudy handed the boy a copy of the Bible that lay on his desk. He waited as Cana thumbed through the thin pages until he found the appropriate place. He read the scripture in a flat tone. Malachi 3.1 Look, I am sending my messenger, and he will clear up a way before me, and suddenly the true Lord whom you are seeking will come to his temple and the messenger of the covenant will come, in whom you take delight. He will certainly come, says Jehovah of armies. Rudy explained the fulfillment of the scripture as he walked the path that separated the class into two parts. Jesus himself told his followers that this was a prophecy about John and the role that he would play in God's plan. John preached repentance and forgiveness to the Jews and those who had converted to Judaism. From this group, all kinds of people came to John for baptism, among them harlots and tax collectors who were considered on the lowest rung of society. In the fall of 29 CE, Jesus came to John to be baptized. John resisted this at first, feeling he was too sinful for, to perform such an act for someone as righteous as Jesus. However, Jesus insisted that baptism be carried out as directed, and so it was accomplished this way. When Jesus arose from the water, God's own voice came from the heavens, confirming that Jesus was his son and that he was beloved and approved of by God. From this point, Jesus' ministry began and grew. John's ministry decreased in that his disciples went on to follow Jesus. He had indeed fulfilled his role to prepare the way for Jesus.